Studio One's Bitcrusher. Let's take a look at this device. And before we get started, just know that be mindful of your audio levels because uh, we can, we're can we going to be working with distortion and things can get a little bit crunchy here. And uh, I don't want to blow out anyone's eardrums or ruin any speakers. I'm going to be mind mindful of the le levels and um, I typically use a limiter when I'm editing the video. So just wanted you to be aware of that and let's go ahead and get started. You can find the Bitcrusher by pressing F7 and then coming to the effects tab that will open up by pressing F7. Then we have our personas folder. If we click on that down arrow, these are in alpha order. So you'll see the Bitcrusher is just about here. You can click hold and drag that onto whatever track you'd like to use it on. Uh, I'll F7 and close that out. We can also press F4 and access the inspector. And then within the inspector, we can come to the inserts, click the plus button, come to the personas folder, and then find it here as well. Now, I've already got it loaded on my track, so I'm just going to double click there, F4, to close out the inspector, and let's get started here. Now, if you're watching this video, then you, you're probably already aware of Bitcrushers and have used them yourself. But if you're new to them, just know that they have a variety of uses. Many times they're used to create a lo-fi effect to your source audio, but they can also be used in a more subtle way to create warmth and help glue your audio together. It can uh, be used on instruments, vocals, an entire track, or it can even be used as a sound effect for film. Studio One's Bitcrusher actually combines overdrive, bit depth, reduction, downsampling, and clipping all into one device. So you've got a lot of different options for tweaking your sound. And we'll take a look at what these different parameters are now. To begin with, in the center here, we have a display. And just know that we have a little button here that we can click and toggle on and off to display either a static waveform. Uh, that's going to give us a rough approximation of the adjustments that we're making and how it affects our sound source. We can also uh, deselect that to show a dynamic waveform that's going to respond to the song or audio as it's playing back. I'm just going to put this on the static waveform for now. And as with all plugins here, we've got our power button for deactivating the, the device. We've got bypass. We've got an area for storing and managing our own personal presets. Next to that, we can access presets from Personas here. We've got compare, copy, and paste. We've got an area for working with automation. And if you'd like to know more about automation, just click on the link up above here. And the first perimeter that we have is overdrive. And this is going to apply a warm dist distortion effect. And let's actually just listen to how that sounds. So I'm going to just power this device off for a second and play back. This is an old track of mine. It's like eight years old or something. Let's play that back and hear how it sounds. And I'm going to go ahead and power this on. And let's introduce some of this overdrive. Okay, so that's your overdrive. We can uh, adjust this more finely with the uh, mouse wheel we can click in the field below and actually manually enter in a value there. And just remember, you can use this to create a bit of warmth in your tracks or overdrive it and get a gritty distorted sound. I'm going to take this back down to 0 dB. And just notice here to the, to the center area, as I move this up, we can see our waveform here in the display being adjusted. Next, we have bit depth, and this has a range between 24, which is essentially no processing being done. And we can take this all the way up to one, which is going to really uh, crush your audio and make it sound heavily distorted. So let's actually give that a listen. And we also have a dirt button here. And this introduces instability in the higher frequencies to provide an even grittier sound. And for this, I'm going to take the gain down because that's really going to juice it up a bit here. Thank you. 
and deactivated. Okay, and that is our bit depth. And then the next one we have here is down sample. When we have it set to one, this is basically off. We can take this all the way up to 40. I'm gonna rewind a bit, playback. And we can see our waveform changing here. And actually, I'm going to change this to the active display. Now we also have a zero down here, and this is going to add a ringing effect in the higher frequencies, so I'll go ahead and engage that. And back to one. And so let's move on to the clip parameter here. I'm just going to rewind that back to the beginning. And then for the clip, this lets you add one of several different clipping types. We've got digital overflow and fold back. And the clip knob here is going to allow you to set the threshold for when the effect takes place. When we have it set to zero dB, there's going to be no effect. And then as we move to the left, we're going to introduce some of the clipping, whichever mode we've selected down below. And now the digital clipping will squarely clip your audio. The foldback will create harmon harmonics in your signal by inverting its peaks. And the overflow also inverts your audio peaks, but also offsets them. So let's listen to how the clip sounds. It's going to be very subtle on the digital. Let's try overflow. And we can see the change in the peaks of the waveform here. And fold back. Let's bring in a touch of overdrive. Okay, and then we have a gain here. This is going to adjust the overall level of your signal and we have an auto box down here, and if we check that, then we're no longer able to manually adjust the gain. And this it's going to be handled automatically by Bitcrusher itself. And to round out here, we have a mix knob, which I actually should have made more use of. This is going to apply a blend or allow you to adjust the blend of your process signal with your unprocessed audio signal. And this could have been really helpful for uh, fine-tuning our settings when we were tweaking just a minute ago. So if I go ahead and play back, bring in some overdrive, bring back some of the unprocessed. At 0% we're essentially uh, not altering our signal at all. Okay, and so that is the Bitcrusher. It's not a plugin that I actually have ever used before, but I still wanted to make a video covering the different parameters. 
and some of how you can make use of it within your music or film effects, soundtracks, um, or processing vocals. This can even allow you to have kind of a talk box effect or a telephone effect. So something to experiment with. And just remember, the presets are here. So you can go through these if you're not familiar with this device like me. And then just experiment with some of these presets to give you a better idea of what can be accomplished with the Bit Crusher.